Do you believe in ghosts? Yeah, you better believe in ghosts, because you do not own your body, remember? No, I'm gonna explain you guys everything. But first, I'll just recap on the Shane Dawson situation. Part 6 is not gonna come, because, well, it wasn't exciting. The final video that Shane put up, number 8, wasn't exciting whatsoever. Uh, Jake Paul didn't actually put much information. Shane wasn't capable of extracting information from him. Well, I, I guess the best way to do it would be to put a fucking psychiatrist, a therapist against Jake Paul. It would have worked because Shane's therapist has a water personality. She has a fire. She could have manipulated Jake Paul into saying things. And if she has good intentions, that manipulation would have been, well, helpful for every one of us. Right? We just get information, finally. And we're done with this shit. But now, things are not really clear. Alyssa made a few statements that just still lingers on and it's again. She has the most she had the most clear and honest perspective. Because she was the one sort of mostly manipulated, I would say. And uh, the fact that Logan is a bad brother. I mean that's that's sort of normal behavior, really, from a hider. Yeah, he hides a lot of shit. Has a lot of stupid shit. But when he comes out out, out of the dark, he doesn't know how to... how to fight successfully, in a way. It is confusing, but watching the video for two hours, when Jake Paul is just like... Like, like, I don't know. <laughs> you remove that and you're probably cutting a video in half. Of all the times Jake Paul just kind of stumbles on his thoughts. And doesn't know what to say. It is really not worth watching, in my opinion. And if you caught yourself watching that shit, you probably feel disappointed. I mean, I am. I am utterly disappointed because Shane doesn't didn't know what he was doing in that case. He was great at building suspense and making me interested. But he just kept doing that for the entire video basically. It's like, well, is there anything valuable? Yes, you have sat down with Jake Paul alone face to face and and uh, nothing happens because Shane gets destroyed. Shane gets confused. Not only what what questions to ask and which questions are effective and all these things, he's just completely lost. He's easy to be manipulated. Jake hides a lot of information away. I mean, totally nonsensical, basically. It's a total failure, I would say. Because the main event failed. The main event felt like, well, nothing has been cleared up whatsoever. And this is what I've expected. I knew this was going to happen. Because Shane is just easily manipulated by Jake Paul. In this case. He's easily intimidated by this shit. And he, yeah, he will feel uncomfortable. It's like, but, but you did manipulate children. And Jake is like, nah. But merch. Uh, you gotta solve that problem yourselves, assholes. Stop blaming J. Paul. I'm gonna plug my merch. You know what I'm gonna do. You figure out how to keep your ch ch children away from buying shit. I mean, that would have been a, a generally nice response. If you could figure that much. 
Um, I sort of support Jake on that. I mean, yeah, he's a troublemaker, but like, he at least brings up the troubles that have actually have to be solved in a stupid way. He brings that up. It's just like the left. The left isn't. They bring up problems that have to be solved. And this happens on and on very often. But again, I don't feel that I have actually found anything valuable in the conversation besides that. Besides, yeah, I, I feel bad about my brother, but I still have to respect him for I have such a deep connection with him. Blah, blah, blah. So I've said, do you believe in ghosts? Because here's another proof of why ghosts should exist. You don't actually own your body. The body has been given to you, but you don't own it. It's just going to live and die. Sure, you have control over it. Great. You don't know who gave, to, gave it to you and for what reason. But one of the biggest proofs of that is that you can actually exist outside of your body. Not necessarily spiritually or anything, but you, as I write these things down, that is me, that is who I am. If I plan something, that's what I want to do. If I create something, that is what I care about. All of this stuff starts to accumulate and exist outside of me and my body simply interacting and helping it exists is almost creating a baby right so what stops this to continue existing after you know the body dies all of the stuff that i'm creating what, what stops it to continue existing obviously well nothing is going to interact with me or I'm not going to be conscious about this. That's kind of a problem that has to be still solved. I mean, I don't want to talk about possessions. Can I possess a computer? Can I become the computer? That would be interesting. And control it from a spiritual level. I don't know how that works. It is confusing. This is not exactly what this video is about, though. It is important to understand that that concept that you actually exist outside of yourself. And you have to. Because otherwise you're beating yourself up. This is the clue. If you say to yourself, for example, I'll do this. And you forget about it. And you remind yourself, I'm like, hey, brain, remember, I will do this okay i will go and program that thing that i wanted to program and your brain is going to be like why are you not doing it then or why don't you just put up a plan and interact with it later interact with this thought later instead of just trying to remember and be being like oh shit i forgot about it no shit sherlock you forgot about it because brain doesn't care your brain doesn't want to care about anything. It just wants to stay calm and satisfied with how things are. And most importantly, your brain doesn't want to fight or hide. Necessarily, feeling blank, which is the feeling that I'm trying to describe right now, is actually better than feeling that you have to solve some kind of problem in your life either by fighting or hiding, if there's any stress in your life. And once that stress sort of dissipates and disappears, you will feel very, very empty. Oh boy, it's like, well, I like fighting with my husband. Shut the fuck up, feminazi. Okay? That's not what this is about. But people get into this, like, myth a midlife crisis and uh, they just stick with it oh so I just gonna go back and just start fights whatever 
Because I don't know what to do after. I feel blank. Like, what do I do with this shit? I believe you just start living on autopilot. And you accept it. It's the hardest thing to accept that you don't exist at that point. Like, your ego just completely disappears because your ego was that. Was fighting or hiding. Uh, the rest of the ego sort of still exists the most important core personality right because you're still aiming to do certain things more than other things you, you're no longer jumping off cliffs and fighting yourself like i really want to jump off a cliff but i i shouldn't right is this is gonna hurt jeez you, you no longer fight yourself you sort of accept that yeah it's bullshit a lot of things are bullshit on the internet you have a division between a collective uh, a mainstream establishment uh, content and then you have the conspiracy content where people are sort of independent they're trying to be independent but they struggle of actually delivering decent value but at the same time they give you a unique perspective and both sides are pretty valu valuable the mainstream is a little bit too strict too clean and yes conspiracies feel quite dirty when you jump into them and it doesn't feel like you get much value if what all you expect is just some orderly information like you, you're not gonna get that you're gonna get rough edges that you have to figure out for yourself and you're not going to be able to fit it in your life but uh, you, you still have to appreciate both perspectives and uh, what both things generate I mean I love I love Skyrim and I'm hoping that Bethesda is gonna create another Skyrim eventually but like seriously we're gonna have to live through this new follow game this space game like there's a lot of bullshit that's gonna be involved until Elder Scrolls 6 is coming out oh my god what in eight years or something jeez <sighs> and there's a lot of other shitty games that I have to sh sit through and agonize myself and not really enjoy them but at the same time I don't care, I'm just going to sit through them because I've already planned that this is the best thing that I can do and it's, I sort of accept a lot of things. And so you realize that this feeling of blank comes from accepting everything, that everything is just sort of bullshit and the best thing you can do is just live and calm yourself down so you somewhat allow time to not feel much at all again you don't need to fight or hide so this time slow down speed up it doesn't even matter anymore <laughs> even that doesn't matter a lot of things just stop mattering because you no longer have to figure out whether those things are actually harmful or not and you look into Adam Ruins everything series it helps you do this it specifically triggers on these things that are attacking your life and might actually uh, push you into that position where you feel blank but some people are just triggered to fight over a, a lot of these um, misconceptions almost for the sake of fighting or hiding I mean almost for that sake because it generates uh, it generates interest in life they don't know how to deal with this feeling blank they don't know how to jump over this hurdle it's it's really tough because again you need to let go of your ego and understand that not fighting and hiding is actually good for you you're not stressed anymore you're not longer triggered by anything you can actually be honest and live in the moment because again You don't care about anything, so the only thing you care about is what happens right now. 
you are living in the moment you live in as honestly as possible everything that happens you will have a genuine reaction to that and this satisfactory lifestyle people are attracted to that people are attracted to these to people like this because well they're totally clean on so many levels they don't have to fight themselves over anything i have stuff sorted out to a certain degree who knows is that attractive though automatically because the problem with that even though it might be attractive the same people who would be attracted to me for example they will feel fear they'll be like oh shit yeah I'm, I'm sort of attracted but i have to clean myself up as well i have to solve my problems and if if they just blatantly approach me i'll give them the same response i'll give it you, you clean your sh yourself up you, you're not gonna talk to me <laughs> let's see yeah you jump over this feeling right here and as the main part of the series of the entire ninja school you gotta learn how to deal with this you will find out through watching conspiracies and documentaries and other garbage seemingly or exposure of bullshit ruining of things that you have been attached to and that have been ruining your life and stressing you out for no reason once you deal with this you get you're gonna come here so what do you do after you feel blank there's one thing you have to understand is that feeling blank is actually still feels bad and feeling satisfied is good is similar to like how fear becomes excitement fear becomes excitement when you have nothing to lose when there is well no risk involved then there's nothing to fear wait they're they're not the same not having stuff to lose and being in full control and understand that there is no risk these are not the same things apparently it should so it probably fits this as well feeling blank feels like yeah i have nothing to lose but that feels bad because like what really i i i supposed to have stuff to lose i supposed to exist right and uh, and when you feel satisfied that's actually better than feeling blank so you should be able to easily understand that feeling blank it is bad but it's as closest to satisfaction as you can be and uh, is there anything that prevents you from being satisfied instead of feeling blank is there really anything see that's that's why people are so scared of this oh boy because now now you either admit that you have some kind of problems to solve or you just accept to be satisfied that's it and attract problems in this case oh yeah if you if you feel satisfied you will start attracting problems attracting other people's problems because you will react you will genuinely react to other people's uh, position in life if someone is homeless but they kind of trigger your attention for whatever reason you will genuinely feel bad now uh, and you will sort of feel like you know how to solve this problem like this this feels weird at the same time you can just oh walk away but simply because you haven't been triggered simply because you know that's bad I'll, i don't want to jump off a cliff i don't want to interact with this person i don't know how to deal with this is this this might set me on fire right but at the same time it could appear in your plan as like yeah i need to figure out how to how to do this maybe how to strengthen my amount of triggers that would allow me to approach a person in need like, there's a lot of work but everything now sort of will become an, will become autopilot will not feel 
that important anymore. Because you almost have life figured out already. Uh, but again, this is exactly what's going to allow you to feel the moment. If nothing else matters. <laughs> right? That's great. That's wonderful. If you're not triggered by anyone's death, well, no, that's not exactly what this is about. Things will trigger you. Things will pull you back if a lot of problems. If, if you have built a tower and it collapses, the house of cars collapses, uh, well, you have to rebuild it, you have to fight for it again. But you don't have to destroy it intentionally. Just so you could, you know, you roll the, the stone up on the mountain, like Sisyphus or whatever his name is, and it just falls down. It's like, you, you didn't made it fall down, did you? You didn't just beat yourself up to do something completely meaningless. You didn't just stack cars together and just destroy it for the purpose of, I have nothing better to do. Holy shit. Oh, you better figure that shit out, because... Because a lot of people are wasting time. And I hate you guys for that. Let's get the fuck out of here.